All right, today we're going to talk about some diagnostic tools that I recommend, especially for DIY. But first, coffee. All right, I get the question a lot, hey, what diagnostic tools should I use? And I show a lot of the tools that I have in my videos. So if you watched any of my videos, you've seen quite a few tools that I have. And I also get the question, hey, what about for our DIYers? I don't have any of that fancy schmancy stuff that you have, so what can I use? Well, let's start with DIY basic stuff that I think you guys can get. All right, my number one tool for DIY is going to be a test light. I used this Calvan USA test light for many years. I don't use it anymore. I still have it in the toolbox, but this was my go-to tool for many, many years. And can't go wrong with a test light. So that's my number one thing is a test light. Here I have one here from Harbor Freight. There's nothing wrong with this test light. It works well. It's got a heavy duty clamp there to um, clamp on the stuff and it's got a nice bright light in there. Can't go wrong with it and I they're like four or five dollars at Harbor Freight. So four to five dollars that's my number one tool. The number two tool I would say you got to have some kind of digital multimeter. This thing for the most part you can get free from Harbor Freight right here. It's, yes it's very cheap. It's not anywhere near the quality of some of the more expensive stuff but if you just are on a serious budget but you need to fix your car at the very least you need a multimeter and even if you had to pay for this it's like four or five bucks I think and the third tool I'm gonna to recommend for DIYers is a little code reader I mean if you're gonna do anything with a check engine light you at the very least have to be able to read the codes I don't want you going down to AutoZone and reading the codes for free and then them wanting to sell you a part at the very least you gotta be able to plug it in and at least read the OBD2 codes now this, this little one here is not going to read SRS or uh, ABS codes, but it will read the generic OBD2 codes very well. And it also does uh, emission monitors just with one button. You can see all your emission monitors and if they're uh, okay or set or not. Um, really good. And this thing is like, I want to say it's about $30 for this Autel uh, AL319. Very good little code reader. And the other basic thing you're going to need is probably a couple test leads. These little ones with alligator clips, they're like two or three dollars. Very cheap. You can afford those, I think. Or you can make your own little things like that I've made over the years. That was, you know, didn't cost me hardly anything when you make them yourself. But little things like that. Or you see these, these are off old parts, and I just put some uh, connectors on the end so I can do tests on them that didn't cost me anything you know and it's really nice especially if you're doing the same vehicle over and over you can just grab your little test leads like this and plug it in and you got all the easy connections right there that's another thing doesn't cost you anything you get that when you're doing a repair so this right here I think is the absolute bare bones for a do-it-yourself or if you want to fix anything Power and ground checks are like the number one thing and a close second right behind that would be reading the code so you can get a direction. And so what does this cost? 30 and then if you had to pay for all this maybe another 10 bucks maybe 12 bucks so you're talking 40 to 45 dollars for everything. That is less than one hour diagnostic fee at just about any shop and you can do your own diagnostics a lot of it not everything but you can do a lot of it right there for like 40 or 45 dollars. So right there, that's my basic, bare minimum. If you want to do some diagnostic, there it is right there. And if you really want to get into making your own tools, you can make your own test light. Eric O on South Made Auto showed how to make one of these. This is just uh, a test light with a 9006 headlight bulb off of a Honda. So if you're going to have to, re if you're replacing one and the other one's good, take that and make a test light out of it. Uh, all I did cut the T-pin and uh, solder it on. Make sure not to poke yourself when you're using it but it makes it real easy to touch inside terminals without um, messing them up and you can you can run four amps of current through this. Where a, a normal test light you can only run two to three hundred milliamps so if you really want to test a circuit and know if it can carry load you run a four amp light through it that's probably a excellent chance that it's good. 
So that's a cheap, easy project you can do on your own. Not a lot of money. Alright, there you go. That was the absolute bare bones, what I think you need as a DIY if you want to do any kind of diagnostics. Now what about if you already have those tools and maybe you want to upgrade a little bit? Or maybe you have a little bit more money. You're not rich, but you got a little bit more money. You want to buy a little bit better quality tools. Well then, I recommend get a better test light. Although the other test light works just fine. You want to upgrade to a little bit better test light, maybe a longer lead or whatever. I have this OTC, what model is this, 3636? You can do something like that, but honestly, I think the other one works just fine. But if you want to, this is in the neighborhood of about 30 bucks. And I would definitely recommend getting a better multimeter. The other one works as a bare bones budget free thing, but obviously if you get a better, you know, digital multimeter, it makes life easier. It'll do better checks. This one is auto ranging, which is nice. You don't have to switch the dials to figure out where you got to be. Um, so I definitely recommend a better multimeter. This one, I don't remember how much this was. This I bought this a million years ago. Radio Shack doesn't even exist anymore, do they? But in any event, something in the forty to sixty dollar range for a multimeter that'll get you a really good multimeter in most cases. And obviously, you can spend three or four hundred dollars if you want a nice fluke. But in my opinion, you can do a lot of damage with just something like this. And then if you want to get a little bit better than a code reader, you can get something like this Top Don OBD Can Elite. And this not only does it read codes, but it can actually look at manufacturer specific information. Not everything like a big full fledged scan tool, but it can see a lot of stuff. It, easy, it even has some crude um, graphing capabilities that you can do. It'll also look at the, uh, the emission monitors and things like that. And it'll also do SRS and uh, ABS codes too, where the little code reader won't. So this, for I think, what do these cost? Like $100, $120 right in that area. These do a lot for not a lot of money. So you could definitely step up to something like this. And I think, you know, just for this setup right here, you're probably only at about $175 right here. So not a ton of money. Still, that's a little bit. But one diagnosis, if you bought these tools and diagnosed one vehicle, you've pretty much paid for those tools. All right, if you want to step up your game a little bit more in the diagnostic field as a DIY, you could always get yourself a Power Probe 4. These run about $150 right now, I think. Um, what's really nice and convenient is it has a 23-foot cord. And if you put the rocker forward, it gives you power right here and then this little lead right here is ground so no matter where you go you always got a good known power and ground which makes it very convenient but these are a handy little tool for not a ton of money I mean hundred fifty dollars that's a decent amount but it's not ridiculous it's not in the thousands of dollars alright and at some point if you do enough diagnostics you're gonna need a scope and for the DIY this right here is a great little choice this is a digital scope from my AES Wave. It's a single channel. I'll just fire it up. It comes pre-programmed with automotive set uh, settings. You could just pick one. I just picked the top one, whatever it was. But it has a nice little picture and everything. But uh, there are just some times where you have to have a scope. Uh, the signals are just too fast and you need to be able to see the detail and you have to have a scope. This is a great little choice. I have one, you see it just plugs in with banana leads, you can also get them with BNC, but um, great little tool, and I think they're only like about $100 to $150. Uh, I know Scanner Danner uses them, and heck, even Keith uses one. And so at about $150 a piece for these two tools, you're looking at about $300. Bucks. I definitely think that's within the realm of a DIY. These are great little tools that can help you diagnose stuff. All right, now that you've seen some DIY tools, here's a selection of some professional caliber tools. If you've watched any of my videos, you've seen my Autel MS906. I use this a lot. This is a great little bi-directional scan tool, highly recommend it, especially if you're working on Hondas. But they're at least $1,000. And here's my Vantage Ultra from Snap-on. You've seen me use this a lot. This is my scope. This is my go-to scope. Um, and so if I ever need to scope a signal, this is what I'm going to grab. But these run around $2,700 or $2,800 brand new. And then, um, then you've got to get them updated. 
but uh, you can get them cheaper on eBay, you know, but definitely an expensive tool, of course, it's Snap-on. And if you've watched my vid videos before, you've seen me use my AES Wave test lead kit. These things run about $200, but it comes with just about every test lead kit you can imagine. And they it's nice because they have banana plugs on the end. So you don't have to worry about making any more test leads like I showed in the beginning of the video. And one of my newest tools would be this breakout box from OTC. It allows you to look at all the connections on your data link connector where, you're, where you plug your scan tool in. Um, definitely helps with controller area network or CAN issues. I'll try to feature that in a future video. And the last thing I'll show you is this master relay test kit from Lyle, 69300. And it comes with all different adapters that you can plug in in place of relays and do testing. Definitely allows you to uh, test circuits pretty easy. Comes with different adapters and an on off plug. Pretty nice little kit. I don't remember how much this thing ran, but it's probably in the $150 range. And then these are a little over 200 bucks. And so obviously tools like this can run in the thousands of dollars. And I understand not all of you have thousands of dollars to spend on tools. And so I, that's the part of the reason I made this video is I'm trying to show you some alternatives. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this little video on diagnostic tools ranging from the ultra cheap DIY to the more expensive Pro Caliber stuff. And as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.